Thank you all for being here. Next, uh, I have uh, Donna Gilmore, followed by uh, uh, Jim Heddle. Okay, yeah. Uh, Jim Heddle and uh, Mary Beth Brannigan uh, gave me their minutes. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, I also have her. So okay. you have uh, up to nine yeah. minutes. Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to be speaking uh, um, about the uh, dry cast storage situation in California and some important information uh, that the Commission needs to know. Uh, there was a game changer that happened last year. The NRC finally said, well, I guess it's okay just to leave all this nuclear waste sitting right along our coastline, basically indefinitely. So we have Diablo Canyon, San Onofre, uh, Humboldt Bay. Um, so we're stuck with you had approved what was a short-term decision to let them leave the waste there, and now we're faced with this being indefinitely. Um, the problem is these canisters, based on research that I and others have done, these canisters that they're using may fail within 20 and, or to 30 years from cracking from our corrosive marine environment. Um, they cannot be inspected, they cannot be repaired, um, and they found at Diablo Canyon that they have canisters that were loaded with fuel for only two years that have all the conditions for cracking already. Um, and they have no plan in place if one of these fails how to deal with it. Next slide. Now, uh, San Onofre is proposing to put an underground system in uh, this is an experimental system. It's never been used anywhere in the world. Uh, they will tell you it's similar to one in Humboldt, but it's very different. I'm not going to go over all the details because I don't want to run out of time, but I've, I've made these so you can look at them later without having me talk and still understand them. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so we covered the, the Diablo Canyon. There's more details on that. Let's go to the next one. Uh, I always said no spec. Oh, let's just go to the next one. Okay. There is a, um, a component at the Coburg nuclear plant um, in South Africa that has the same environment as our San Onofre uh, situation with onshore winds, high moisture, and fog. The, can the canister in Coburg failed in 17 years. It was thicker than our canisters. Our canisters in, in California are one-half to five-eighths inches thick, okay? 0 0.065 or 0 0.50. The Coburg um, uh, canister, it was a storage tank that failed, was 0.6 inches deep. So 17 years before it failed. Okay, um, go to the next slide. So based on the loading time of the canisters in the United States, let's, let's be optimistic and say we have at least 20 years before they crack all the way through. That means Rancho Seco, we could have a through wall leak in six years. San Onofre, which is a much more corrosive environment, eight years, and there's Humboldt and Diablo. So because I live about five miles from San Onofre, I'm focused on that one, and it's the most likely to go first, okay? Um, so we have eight years to deal with this problem. And, and the, go to the next slide. Okay. Um, just to let you know that, that I'm not making this stuff up, okay. I met with Dr. Chris Singh. He made a presentation at uh, an Edison meeting. He says it's not practical to repair these canisters. This is the manufacturer that makes these things, the Diablo. Let, and let's be realistic. You have to find the crack, and then, then it means to repair it. And you will have, in the face of millions of curies of radioactivity coming out of the canister, we think that's not a path forward. So we have him on tape. I've got a, a, a YouTube video of him speaking at an, at an Edison presentation. So, and they have no plan to deal with the crack canisters. They're going to allow them to destroy the spent fuel pools, which is the only way to, to recover from a failed canister. Uh, I'm dealing with the CPUC on the funding issue uh, to try and stop Edison from uh, buying the, the underground system and to stop from destroying the pools. But we could use Coastal Commission help. Um, you, transporting crack canisters to get them out of here, you know, you don't want to transport cracking canisters. Um, so, uh, and there's no rating for crack canisters for a seismic event. Go to the next slide. 
Okay, so we didn't know, and, and they aren't even monitoring them for radiation. We will only know after they leak radiation. We will not know before. They have no early warning system in these, in these things. Let's just go to the next one. So I, I never like to come with a problem without a solution. I find that's the most effective way to do things, and I'm sure you appreciate solutions, and not just problems, all right? So after speaking with experts, engineers, nuclear physicists, scouring the world, doing my own homework, reading technical reports. The technology used in the rest of the world um, is thick canisters up to 20 inches thick. And we're using half inch, roughly half inch thick canisters. And in comparing the two types of two technologies, the thick ones don't crack, they can be repaired. Uh, they have seals, and, Ed, and Edison will tell you, oh, well, the seals might fail. Well, you have early warning, and if a seal fails, you can replace a seal. But if a canister cracks, you can't fix it. So, you know, ASME certification, this is the American stand, mechanical standards. We don't even have that certification for what we use. There's no defense in depth. They store theirs in concrete buildings for extra environmental and, you know, reinforcement from other external events. Um, with these thin canisters, you have to use this six concrete overpack that has vent holes in it. So it gives the illusion you have this big, thick, heavy storage thing, but it's really vented so the thin canister can cool. Uh, so it is, isn't really providing any protection. The thick ones are the world leader. In. Okay, what Edison will tell you is the thick canisters are not licensed in the U.S. Here's the situation. It costs millions of dollars to apply for an NRC license and it takes about 18 months. No vendor will apply for a license for their product unless they have a customer. And right now, they, you know, th there's no customer. So Edison has to be persuaded to at least get a bid from these thick canisters and evaluate that technology against what, what they're buying. So once there's a customer, then it'll take about 18 to 30 months max to, to get a license. And, um, it, it, you know, it's pretty much a rubber stamp with the NRC once you apply, so it's not like that, that wouldn't happen. So, um, and, and the fuel has to cool quite a few years in the pool, so there's not an issue of the concern about expediting it out of the pool. The fuel has to cool years longer. So there's time right now to do this. Go to the next one. All right, here's what the NRC is doing for us. They're, they're approving canisters and ignoring anything that might go wrong after 20 years. I have the actual approval where they say, well, we're not, we're gonna pretend that whatever happens after 20 years doesn't apply, so we're only saying this is good for 20 years. That's the current process at the NRC. And they're lowering their standards in order to uh, continue to approve these thin canisters. Let's just skip it because I don't want to run out of time. Okay, this is how Germany stores their uh, canisters. They put them in buildings, they have remote monitoring for all kinds of potential leaking conditions, it's clean, it's kept away from the marine environment. Um, let's, let's go to the next one, okay. Um, I, and in terms of jurisdiction, I think under, uh, under regulation uh, uh, code uh, section 30253 that you have jurisdiction to deal with this, so when Edison comes in for their request to put in that underground system about 100 feet from the bluff, uh, I think you have some jurisdiction to do something with this. Let's keep going. Uh, this, this is the amount of cesium-137 just at San Onofre, okay? And it's in comparison to, on the left is a 10 megaton weapon, that's how much cesium. The Chernobyl accident, all the atmospheric nuclear tests that have ever been done is that third one in the green. The other three is all San Onofre cesium, okay? so. It, a, a problem here, I think use of the coast will be pretty much uh, wiped out if we don't, if we don't deal with this, okay. Uh, and the reason I'm here and doing this is because I've learned that I can't trust Edison. This is a, a, a chart showing they have the worst safety record in the nation. These are complaints from employees. The top bar is San Onofre. The other bars are all the other plants uh, in the in the whole uh, uh, country, and they have the worst safety complaint record from employees. Thank you. Okay. Your time is up and okay. appreciate it. Thank you very much. And that will complete our public comment for today. Um, happy to have been able to accommodate everyone who submitted a card. And so we will move on now to um, our North Coast District.
and the uh, administrative calendar. Thank you. Uh, just one comment on that, if I might. Uh, the actual, the application uh, for the dry cast storage at San, San Onofre has been submitted, and we're reviewing that right now. Thank you. So today I have a number of, of items for you. Uh, first, you received in your packet four de minimis waivers and one immaterial amendment. However, after receiving some very recent public comments and additional information, we decided to pull and not request your support for one of the waivers, uh, Southern California Edison's proposal to install an independent cooling system to serve the existing spent fuel pools at Songs. Instead, I've, I've advised the applicant to submit a CDP application. Um, your staff will more fully evaluate the safety and other concerns raised by members of the public and schedule this matter at a future hearing. And so just to be clear, um, we've pulled the de minimis waiver that's numbered 9-15-0162-W. And so regarding the rest of the waivers and the one in material amendment, we are asking you to concur today in the executive director's determination to grant these approvals. Thank you. Um, I do have some public comment on this. Um, and I'd like to invite up uh, David Asti, uh, followed by Ron uh, Pontes. Welcome. Good morning, commissioners. I, I believe Mr. Pontes has uh, ceded his time to me, but I, I don't believe I'll need that much time. Okay. Four. Please. First off, I'd like to just kind of set a general context that uh, SE has a very good working relationship with the Coastal Commission staff. We work very hard and very, very diligent to meet uh, the staff's requests and keep them fully informed of all the uh, projects that we have ongoing. As a result of that, I have to say that uh, we are very disappointed with the decision to delay the Spent Fuel Island project, uh, 162-W. As you all know, SE must undertake certain preliminary projects to enable the San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station, or SONGS, uh, to proceed with uh, the decommissioning process. The proposed spent fuel island system uh, facilitates plant decommissioning because it's smaller, simpler, uh, it's more localized to the spent fuel areas than the existing once through cooling system. Uh, it also replaces the OTC system, or once through cooled system, eliminates the adverse impacts to marine organisms from impingement, entrainment, and the, the thermal discharge of cooling water to the ocean, as required by the State Water Board's once through cooling policy, which was promulgated back on October 1st, 2010. This project, like the others, will be completed under Song's existing NRC operating license in full compliance with the NRC regulations. An SCE has taken extensive measures uh, to brief regulatory agencies. The Public Utilities Commission has been briefed on this project. State Lands Commission has been briefed on this project. And the Coastal Commission staff was fully briefed and consulted on this project before we ever filed the paperwork. SCE has invited public comment on all aspects of the decommissioning process, including this project, during the quarterly Songs Community Engagement Panel meetings. The most recent one was held on April 16th in San Juan Capistrano. The project was deemed applicable for a de minimis waiver by staff in preparation originally for the March 11th to 13th meeting in Chula Vista, down in San Diego. Again, it was on the consent agenda for the meeting in San Rafael. Uh, so it's been postponed twice until today, and now it's been postponed a, yet a third time. Uh, SCE has responded in detail to all questions that have been posed by the public. Uh, we agreed with the previous pulling of the de minimis waiver to address some of the questions that the public brought forward. We feel like we fully addressed those, and the staff has notified us that they've, uh, they are comfortable with the information we've submitted. And so the commission staff, based on a thorough review, has again recommended the project be granted a de minimis waiver. Uh, again, we are uh, extremely disappointed that it's been pulled yet a third time. Uh, currently, we're evaluating our options, but Candidly, there is no reason for allowing a small segment of the population to derail this process. It's really a disservice to the public at this point. And uh, that's the end of my comments. I'd like to thank you again for allowing me to speak on this particular issue. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to invite up uh, Donna Gilmore, uh, followed by uh, 
Jim Heddle. Oh, actually, these are ceding their time to Donna. Um, before that, I just wanted to be clear for the record that uh, uh, Commissioner Uranga uh, recused himself uh, because he had received a contribution within the period of time in excess of $250, and it's a requirement that we announce uh, the purpose of the recusal. And so uh, I, I had neglected to let him know that he was supposed to re report that, but he will be back for the next item. Thank you. Ms. Gilmore. Th thank you. Yes, I've been following this issue very closely, and unfortunately, um, Edison has not been uh, forthcoming with information that the Coastal Commission needed to make a good decision. Uh, for example, um, you know, Edison said, oh, they're making this spent fuel pool island. Uh, and I asked, I said, well, where has this been used before? I haven't heard of this technology. Oh, well, a lot of places have spent fuel islands. Um, and then I ask a question most people don't ask. Well, what kind of technology do those places use? Do they use chillers like you're proposing? And I have been going back and forth over a month, two months, trying to get a straight answer out of Tom Pal Palmazano, who's running the whole project. And up until yesterday, um, I did not have, he, didn't, he, did, he still didn't have an answer. And I had other people besides me, like Dave Lockbaum and other people. Uh, and then the staff, uh, Coastal Commission staff has had to waste a lot of time on verifying Edison's information and they have misled all of us. This is the first time this chiller technology has ever been used in, uh, for cooling spent fuel pools. And the NRC doesn't plan to even uh, look at this until after it's already installed and then they'll come and take a look at it. So their rubber stamp is, they're consistently rubber stamping. Uh, so it's because of Edison's lack of um, sharing information and not mis- I, I have to work with Edison so much locally that I've learned how to read between the lines when they say things. And I have an entire, all the questions they answered, I submitted additional comments where they have misled the Coastal Commission once again with their information. So I, I can um, share this with the commission, but it's really Edison not being forthcoming. I've attended every one of those public meetings that Edison talked about, and they were very vague. They just called it an island, not getting details, like pulling teeth to get anything out of them. Um, so, so I think Edison has them th themselves to thank for this uh, being such a debacle. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so. Remind me again then, uh, do we have an, an item that we need to take a concurrence with or you were just reporting on that, I believe? That, that's correct. I okay. think you took your action you needed to All take. All right, thank you. So are you gonna move on then? Yeah, I do have more items and I think the commissioners that left the room could come back now. Thank you. Pardon me? Calling all commissioner Urangas. Oh, you didn't concur on the other, uh, I'm sorry. So you we do need, need to, to concur. concur. Yes. The other three de minimis waivers and the one immaterial amendment, we're seeking your concurrence. Thank I'm you. sorry. With that, is there any unwillingness for unanimous concurrence? Seeing none, we do concur. Thank you. Mm -hmm.